So today we want to talk about Instagram and how to get you more traffic and more engagement and grow your following and organic strategies to help build your business. So I'll start off today with why I use Instagram, kind of giving you some overview of what we could use. What is Instagram? Why is it beneficial in 2020? And then I'll talk about some different strategies that I use that I've used to grow my own social media or Instagram pages and what I've used to grow, grow other profiles, other accounts I've worked on and helping them just getting more engagement, getting more real targeted followers that are interested, active, engaging in their products or services or whatever it may be that you're trying to promote. And after that, we could do some Q and A. So again, if you have any specific questions about anything, maybe hold off to the end. If you have any questions about any of the slides or anything I'm talking about, you could throw it in the chat and I'll try to answer as questions as possible. So again, I'll start off with why I use Instagram and kind of start off with the basics. So Instagram is one of the more popular social media sites out there today. Instagram is huge. It's probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular one out there. And there's a low barrier of entry with social media marketing that really makes things nice and appealing to people because you don't have to spend money building a website or anything like that. You have to spend money maybe on a logo design. And other than that, you already have a page on Facebook or Instagram, or whatever platform you're targeting. So not that much that really needs to be done in terms of setting things up or barriers to entry. Like with SEO, you have to build a website and that takes time. And there's a lot of other factors that go into it. And it is really cost effective. I mean, for what you're doing and the reach that you're getting, it's going to be a lot more effective than Google ads or things like that. So if you are running ads on social media or on Instagram, it's a lot cheaper than running ads on Google. There's also a reason why the ads are a lot cheaper on Instagram versus Google. It's because there's not much intent when you're showing people ads on Instagram or social media in general, Facebook, any of these platforms, you're kind of throwing stuff at them, hoping that these people are interested. Where So you set some target demographics, say I'm looking for people this age, this income level, they like this, these interests, but that doesn't mean that they're actually looking for your product or service. You're just hoping they are just because they match those demographics. Whereas on Google, someone searching on Google, they're showing intent. They're actively searching for your product or your service or your keywords. So Google is going to be a little bit more expensive because there's more intent, whereas social media ads are less expensive just because there's not that much intent, intent behind them. It's more for awareness kind of plays. And it does help you reach a large audience for a lot less money than you would have to run with Google ads or anything like that. Because with social media, I mean, it's kind of endless the amount of people you could target. There is billions and billions of people on those platforms and you just have to get in front of the right people at the right times and know how to target those people to get them to become aware of you. And I think Instagram right now, you could see in this chart that the growth is pretty quick and exponential and how fast they've grown over the years. I mean, if you look back in 2012, they had 50 million users. In 2015, they have 400 million users. Now they have over a billion users. And well, that was back in 2018. I'm sure now in 2020, there's even more and it keeps growing. It's not really slowing down. I mean, Instagram is growing and growing and growing. And it's because Facebook owns Instagram. So Facebook owns Instagram and they're promoting Instagram as much as they can because they know Facebook is kind of on the decline. Not as many people are using Facebook as they used to in the past, whereas with Instagram, it just keeps growing. So they're pushing it as much as they can. So it is good to know, if you didn't know that Instagram is owned by Facebook. So if you've worked with Facebook before and know how things work, it's pretty similar. Their algorithms, their reach and all that stuff. So just be aware, Instagram is slowly turned into the Facebook. It's not there yet, but we'll see in a few years, but you never know what's gonna happen with digital marketing. Everything is so dynamic and changes all the time. That's what keeps things interesting as well as you never know what's gonna happen. Like, so for now, I'll talk about some strategies that I wanna go over. Well, first, Instagram really started as a picture and video website where you would, oh no, picture, picture and video sharing social media platform where you would share pictures and 15 second videos. Now they're at one minute videos. So they've kind of expanded on it and grown and they keep adjusting and adding more features and changing things, taking things away. It's constantly evolving. I mean, there is no constant with social media marketing, but with Instagram, they really 
made hashtags what they are. So Twitter and Instagram really built up hashtags and made hashtags popular. Hashtags are when you put the pound sign in front of a word. That makes it a searchable link or a clickable link where you could click on that and find other content related to your topic. So when I post on my social media pages I try, or on Instagram, I try to incorporate hashtags and think of hashtags like keywords. Like what would people be searching if they were looking for your product or service? So I'm an SEO company. I would think the word SEO would be a good hashtag, but there's not much intent behind that keyword. Me using the hashtag SEO, there's a lot of things that people could be looking for if they're typing in SEO. Like they might wanna know what is SEO? How do I do SEO? How can I learn SEO? Can I hire a company to do my SEO? There's a lot of different things they might be looking at. Whereas, so SEO, is going to be more of a general hashtag where a lot of people are going to be using it, but there's not much intent. And we want intent. We want people that are actively looking for your product or your service or whatever it is that you're marketing. So for myself, I'm an SEO company. I might use a hashtag SEO company, SEO services, SEO consulting, things like that, where it's more targeted, where people are looking for SEO consulting, they're probably looking for a consultant. They're not just browsing around. They know what they're looking for. There's intent. There's not as many people using that hashtag or searching for it, but the people that are searching for it are going to want to use my services. So don't just try to go for like throwback Thursday or motivational Monday or any of these really generalized hashtags. So it gets you a lot of people looking at it, but there's, it's not targeted. And we really want targeted. We want people that are targeted that have intent because growing your account and getting more followers is great. But if they're just general followers that don't have any interest in your product or service, it's not going to do any good. And even if you have followers, you need to make sure you convert those followers into clients, into phone calls, into leads. Followers are only so it's half the, battle you really need to get those followers to convert kind of like with seo i can get you a lot of traffic to your website from google but we need to make sure your website's optimized to capture those conversion or capture those people and convert them into leads into phone calls into making a purchase whatever it is that your conversion goal is but that is the ultimate goal is we need to make sure that it is optimized to capture that as much as possible. Same with your platform, with your page. You want to make sure that your page, your Instagram profile is optimized to capture that traffic, meaning having a good bio, writing a good clear bio with a call to action. So in Instagram, you get a bio description where that's where I would try to throw in something like for myself, again, I'm an SEO company. I offer free consultations, so I put in my bio call today for a free consultation. I'll put my phone number so people could call me. Or if you want people to email you, put your email. If you're an e-commerce website, you could say free shipping on all orders over $50 or whatever it may be, but give them some incentive to want to click onto your listing because Instagram doesn't really want you to leave Instagram. They lock you in Instagram. There's not much of a way, or there's not many ways for you to leave Instagram other than clicking a bio link or doing a swipe up story. But other than that, Instagram locks you in there. So you got to, get them to leave, get them to convert over to your profile or to your website or whatever it may be that you're promoting. But the way I've grown my accounts and grown other people's accounts is by being social on social media. So it's called social media for a reason. It's not just called media. A lot of people, I mean, almost everyone is great at the media aspect, posting content, doing status updates, but not a lot of people are social on social media. And that's how you grow your account is by engaging other people that are targeted to your niche. So what I would do is I would go and find other SEO pages, other people, other SEO companies, Instagram pages. And what you could do is start engaging with the people that follow your competitors, followers, because if they're following your competitor, they're more than likely interested in what you have to offer. They just don't know about you. And by you following them, liking their pictures, commenting, they're going to get a notification and that's going to get them to look at your profile. And if the targeting is done right, that's going to get them to follow you back. Then if you have a strong bio, that's going to get them to convert into clients because again, followers are great, but that's not what we're really after. We want, well, it depends on your ultimate conversion goal, but ultimately we really want them to convert into leads for your business. And with Instagram, you can have a personal page or a business page. Business page is going to give you more insights into, it's going to show you analytical data, which is great. You don't want to just be guessing at what's working. You want to look at the analytics and get statistically accurate information about your audience and who they are, when they, what they behave like, what days they visit, how often they visit, what times of the day is the most engagement. 
So I would make sure that if you do have an Instagram page, get that business page for the analytics, just so you could really see the data. It's gonna really help you make more informed decisions and better optimize your profile and capture better leads and better traffic. But some more, so Instagram has a lot of features. They keep adding these features all the time and they keep evolving and Instagram wants to capture social media and take hold of it and kind of encompass everything. So again, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So when I tell you all this information now, just be aware that Instagram is owned by Facebook. So they're just trying to capture as much audience as possible and keep that market share because Facebook is the second most popular website on the internet. Google's the most popular website. Facebook and YouTube actually switch off every day between number two and three. Facebook knows they're on the decline. Even though they're still one of the most popular websites out there, they're on the decline. Not as many people are using them. So they have to stay up to date and they want to make sure that they stay alive and Instagram is their baby. And that's what they're going to use to kind of keep things going, keep things moving. And with Instagram, what they're going to do is they're going to copy all these other social media platforms, um, different features and copy them because they want to take hold of the entire audience market share. So Instagram and Snapchat are competitors. They don't like one another. Instagram is trying to take over that market share that Snapchat has. So Instagram created Instagram stories. And what that is, is that is pretty much the same exact thing as Snapchat. Whereas you post 15 second stories on Instagram. They're tw they last for 24 hours. After that, they get deleted. So they're just temporary, short, quick little snippets. They could be pictures, videos, they start adding all these filters, just like Snapchat, so you can change your face and add all this, these cool things and features to it. So Instagram stories is a big part of Instagram right now. They are really competing against Snapchat and wanna take Snapchat out. So anytime you log into Instagram, the first thing you see on your newsfeed is the Snapchat stories at the top. The stories, or the Instagram stories, sorry, they're always at the top because Instagram is pushing them. They wanna go back to their shareholders and say, look, Every day we're getting a billion Instagram stories. Snapchat, they're only getting 900,000 stories a day or snaps a day. So Instagram wants to have more people using them, more people watching them. So that's why they always throw it at the top because they want you to use it. I would test it out, see how it works if you can, or play around with it. You could share your old posts in Instagram stories. You could share new content. It's whatever you want. Instagram stories though is pretty powerful though. So with Instagram, Instagram locks you on Instagram. They don't want you to leave Instagram, but I'm not sure if you've seen these before. Instagram stories, sometimes it says swipe up. So I'll say swipe up and go to the website. This is so powerful in terms of driving traffic to your website or wherever you want to drive traffic to. Because again, Instagram does not want you to leave, but if you have more than 10,000 followers and you have a business page, you get this feature that says swipe up on your stories. So if you don't have 10,000 followers yet, you can let me know. I help a lot of people grow their accounts and get you real targeted followers. So if you need help with that growth, you can reach out to me. You can see my email, brandon at seooptimizers.com and I'll help you grow your account to get 10,000 real followers. Then once you get that, you get this feature in Instagram stories that says swipe up. Using this, so I have a page on Instagram for skateboarding. I love skateboarding, it's one of my passions. So. I have a page for SEO. It's not that interesting. People don't really go on Instagram for learning about SEO, but they love skateboarding. And I've grown my page to 340,000 followers organically, never spending money on ads. So I have 340,000 followers. I have my bio link. My bio link maybe gets 20, 25 clicks a week. It's not that many people clicking my bio link. I would think more people would click my link since I have so many followers, but not many people click that link. When I do an Instagram story, and I say swipe up to go to my website, I will get hundreds of people to my website in minutes. It's insane how powerful this works. Instagram, again, locks you in Instagram. They don't want you to leave Instagram. They want you to stay on Instagram, but the Instagram stories are the one thing that they actually let you use to market your business. So if you have 10,000 or more followers, you need to start implementing these swipe up stories. You are gonna see a big boost in traffic if you do these. You could, so, and with the Instagram stories, the swipe up, you could send them to your Facebook page to get more people on your Facebook page. You could send them to TikTok, you could send them to your website, you could send them to YouTube, you could send them anywhere you want. You could send them to your friends' websites, you could do 
promotional shout outs where people pay you to do these shout outs because doing an advertisement on Instagram is only going to get them so far. But if you have a swipe up story and then they see that they're getting all this traffic and they're paying for an advertisement from you, they're gonna be like, wow, this is actually working. I'm getting sales. I'm not just getting followers. I'm actually getting sales because again, followers are great, but that's not the means to end. That's only half the battle. The other half that battle is getting these followers once they're on your profile to actually leave your profile and convert into paid clients. That really is the ultimate goal for marketing in general or digital marketing. So Instagram stories though, really, really powerful. Play around with them, test them out, use them because you're going to see they will work. And I feel like Instagram stories might get a little bit more reach than organic posts on Instagram, just because Instagram wants to push these stories more. So when you're posting on Instagram, in the past, let's say you have 100 people that follow you on Instagram. If I post on Instagram, all 100 people would see what I post. But nowadays, Instagram has their Facebook algorithm built into it. And it doesn't show your content to everybody. It shows your content to probably maybe 50%, 40% of your audience. I'm not sure the exact number, but nobody really knows. But just guess estimating about, let's say, 40% of the people that follow you will ever see what you post on Instagram. So if you have 100 people that follow you, now only 40 of these people will see what you post without you having to boost it up, paying Instagram to show it to the rest of your audience. But with stories, I see that I actually get a little bit more engagement. I get more reach. It's different for everyone, so it might not be true for everyone platforms, but I feel like Instagram is going to reward you for using some of these other features because, again, they want you to use this so they could go back to their shareholders and say, look, look how many people are using Instagram stories. Snapchat's not getting this many stories. We're actually beating them out. We're getting more users. So play around with them, test it out. Same with IGTV. So IGTV is Instagram TV. This, stand, this is Instagram long form video. So remember Facebook owns Instagram and Facebook is really big for videos right now. Like people are posting videos all the time. Video content works really well on Facebook. So if you have videos on Facebook, like anytime you log into Facebook, you usually see videos. Facebook even has a little section on their app that says videos as just dedicated to videos because videos are really powerful. So Facebook knows though that they're slowly on that decline and Instagram is growing and growing, but Instagram only has one minute videos. They realize let's incorporate long form videos into Instagram. So let's have IGTV where you could have videos that are more than one minute. You could have five minute, 10 minute videos. You could have really long form videos on Instagram now. So if you have long form video, if you have videos on YouTube, if you have videos on Facebook, take those videos, pull them off Facebook and throw them on IGTV and test it out. See how it works. You never know if it's going to get more engagement. Again, Instagram wants to kind of reward you for using the other features that they have. They want you to post on Instagram, but they also want you to use these other features. So you kind of get used to it. And then you start getting more comfortable with long form videos on Instagram and get more comfortable with long or Instagram stories and all these other features because they want you to keep using Instagram and staying on Instagram as long as they can keep you on there. So IGTV, another one to play around with, test it out see how it works for your audience. And one that just popped up like a couple of weeks ago is Instagram Reels. So another competitor, Instagram and Snapchat or Instagram and TikTok are competing against one another. So Instagram doesn't want to lose that market share to TikTok. So what do they do? They just copy TikTok and incorporate what TikTok has, which is Reels. They incorporated that, I think like two or three weeks ago. It's still really new. So all this stuff is really dynamic. Everything's constantly changing and evolving with social media. So Instagram Reels, that's where you could add inst videos on Instagram that just auto play. They just keep replaying and they're more vertical. They're not the same square kind of image that you're used to. These are more like Instagram stories that go on repeat that are going to be on your profile indefinitely. So Reels, I would play around with them, test them out, see how it works for your audience. I've done a few Reels and it works pretty well. It's unique. You got to, some people like it. Some people don't like it. Other people are just like, why are you putting Reels on here when I could go on TikTok and get these Reels? But you'll see people were saying the same thing about Instagram stories. And now Instagram stories are really pretty the normal thing on there. It's not something where people are hesitant saying, I'd rather just go on Snapchat and use in Snapchat stories. People are going on Instagram and comfortably using these Instagram stories. 
without any issues. So reels, I feel like in the future, not much hesitation, hesitation or pushback. Right now, it's new. There's going to initially be pushback. People aren't going to be happy. TikTok's not going to be happy. We're going to have to see how TikTok fights back, what happens. I know TikTok is being sold right now. So we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of stuff up in the air with TikTok on um, what's going to happen. But Instagram sees something that they like. They're just going to copy that feature and incorporate it. So just be aware. <laughs> Instagram is going to keep on copying other features from social media platforms and trying to make a robust social media platform where it's like the one-stop shop. You got everything in Instagram now. You got long form video, you have stories, you have reels. You can have live now, so you can go live on Instagram because people wanna go live, just like Facebook. So Facebook has a go live feature. It works really well. People wanna go live on Facebook. So Facebook said, hey, let's incorporate this on Instagram. So you can go live on Instagram and that's essentially using stories. So you go on Instagram stories and then it'll have this feature or this little button that says go live. You could go live to your entire audience and it then it's gonna notify your audience saying, hey, check it out. Brandon's going live. Do you wanna go watch his live stream? Live streams, then you could take this live stream, you could save it and you can re-upload it as a video or a long form video or IGTV or you can repurpose it. So going live is something that you might want to play around with, test it out. You never know how these strategies are going to work out or these features are going to work for you. Sometimes they work great. Sometimes your audience isn't the most receptive, but it's all about just kind of testing and playing around and seeing what works. And really don't be scared of all these new features. Instagram is giving them out because they know that these work and they're going to help you in terms of marketing yourself and marketing your business and getting more traffic. They're not going to put them out there to try to overwhelm you. I know that these seem like a lot of new features that... Most people are just like, I just want to post on Instagram. I don't want to worry, worry about stories, IGTV, reels, going live. I mean, this is just scratching the surface. These are the more important ones. There's other features too that Instagram keeps on adding, taking away, changing, and it's constantly evolving and switching up and moving around. So we'll just have to see what happens in the future. Are they going to keep these features? Are they going to remove them? I mean, Instagram is also, I mean, they're testing out the likes. This is something out that they're testing something that they've been testing, I think for the past like six months or a year where they remove the likes on your post. So you don't see likes anymore, but they're just testing this out. Some profiles have the likes, some profiles don't have the likes. I think business profiles, if you have a business profile, you can see how many people like and comment. But if you're a personal page, I think they've taken those away. Again, it's different for all these profiles. Like on my personal page, I don't see how many people like the post. I'll see if my friends liked it. But I don't see the number anymore. Whereas my business page, I still see the number of people that like it, how many views it gets if it's a video. So, and Instagram is always testing things out. We'll have to see what happens. They might take those likes away permanently. We'll just have to keep watching and evolving because, man, there really is no constant. Instagram is constantly changing and switching things up, but it's really to help you out. If you want to stay up to date with all this stuff, I mean, you come to my classes and my webinars, I talk about these. But other than that, you just have to kind of log in and play around with Instagram or sometimes they update their blog with new feature updates, but you just really have to just play around with it and you see a new button, don't be scared to click it. You're not gonna break anything and you can always delete everything and go back and revert any changes that you might or mistakes that you might've made. So don't be scared. Don't think that if you go live, it's gonna be there forever. You can always remove it, take it down. Same with the reels if it's not set up properly take them away, delete them and start all over again or just scratch off the surface. Say we're not even gonna use these anymore, but play around with it. Don't be scared of breaking anything or clicking the wrong button because there's really nothing you can do wrong except for deleting your account. But if you accidentally delete your account, Instagram is gonna let you know you're deleting it. Are you sure you wanna delete it? They're gonna ask you a lot of times and they're still gonna save your account because they're gonna reach out to you and say, hey, we saw that you deleted your account, but do you wanna come back? We still have all your information here. After six months, they might delete it permanently. But other than that, you still, you're not going to be, you'll be fine. You're not going to lose any information. So don't be scared of playing around, clicking on them, those things and just learning more and playing around and seeing what's out there and what you could use to get more engagement, get more reach. Because all these features are more than likely to get you more reach because not many people use them. And Instagram wants to push these features and promote them and show them to other people saying like, hey, look, 
Brandon's using reels. You could use them too. It's working for him. He's got 5,000 views on his reel. And it's only one hour old. You could do the same. So other strategies I used um, are giveaways. So giveaways are a really great way to kind of build an audience and retap that audience and get them actively engaged again. Because Instagram, again, doesn't really show your content to everybody. They only, they kind of pick and choose who they show it to. But a giveaway is a great way to really spark up engagement and get it going again. So when I do giveaways, I usually reach out to other companies. So I'm not really a brand, my skateboarding page. I reach out to other brands and ask them, hey, do you want to do a collaboration where I have all these followers, you have this company, you're trying to get the word out there. Let's do a giveaway. You give me, you let me know what you could give away in terms of product and then we'll create this giveaway and we'll post it on my page and we'll tell people like this, like this post, follow the sponsor, whoever's sponsoring the giveaway. So that gets the user more followers. Liking the post is gonna get me more engagement on that post, so it gets picked up by more people. Then I also tell them, if you wanna enter this giveaway, tag three friends in the comments. That means they're gonna comment on my post, which is a big signal to Instagram saying like, hey look, people are commenting, they're engaging, but they're commenting three friends, which means they're tagging three friends that are gonna get notifications that someone tagged them in this post, they're gonna look at that post and they see it's a giveaway, they're gonna be like, oh cool, Brandon's tagging me in the giveaway for skateboarding products. I love skateboarding products. It's a free giveaway. That's gonna probably get them to tag more friends and it's just kind of like a perpetual snowball. It just keeps building and building and growing in awareness and it works really well. If you have an actual product, you might wanna do a giveaway with your own product or maybe reach out to an influencer and be like, hey, I wanna know if you wanna do a giveaway. Usually they don't, well, some people will charge for, everyone's different. I don't really charge people to do giveaways because it works. It helps me get more engagement on my audience. People love giveaways. So it makes my page look good. People are happy to get free products. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Some people might charge you to run giveaways. You just want to reach out to them. And you, the best way to reach out to influencers is just reach out to them with a DM. I don't really, you could use like influencer marketing group um, agencies and things like that, but they just mark things up and they're going to double the price where if you just reach out to the influencer directly, they're gonna give you a lot better rates and better deals and it's gonna work out a lot better in your in your favor. So I just have a message where I just copy and paste it saying, hi, my name is Brandon. I was looking at your page and I see that you offer skateboard products or whatever it may be. I was wondering if you wanna do a giveaway and I'll show them like a link to some old giveaways I have done to show them like, hey, look, this is what's worked in the past. It's worked for myself and would you wanna do this for your own followers? And it works pretty well. So that is what I will do in terms of that. So I'll just show you really quickly. Like here is my page on Instagram. So here's my, I'll show you what the giveaway looks like that way. You can kind of see what I mean. And I also tell them if they want an extra, um, extra post to, um, to share this in their story and then they share it in their story. So like, here's a giveaway that I did recently. So you could see we were giving away a skateboard, wheels. So you'd see we announced the winner here so they know that someone's actually winning. But here's a giveaway instructions. Like this post, follow this company, tag three friends, share in your own story. And I use some hashtags, so some keywords in there, some targeted hashtags. And you can see people are tagging their friends. And I mean, this person entered a lot. And they could enter as much as they want, but you can see all these people are tagging their friends and that's gonna get awareness and drive awareness to the profile and get new people on this content. And this works really, really well, extremely well. And I also, also have a service that I could take your competitors' followers. So I could find anybody that's one of your competitors. I could take anybody that's following your competitors and tag them in the comments. So I could take, if you have a competitor that has 10,000 followers, I could take all their followers start tagging them in these comments, they're gonna be tagged in this free giveaway and they're gonna be like, oh cool, I'm tagging the free giveaway. That's gonna get them to wanna enter this giveaway and it works really, really well. So if you are looking for help with that stuff, I'll throw it in the chat at my website it's called Get Plus Followers where you could buy these Instagram comment mentions. So if you want that as a service, that is a great way if you're running a giveaway and you don't do, you 
this is the best way to really boost that giveaway. So here's my website for $20. I'll tag a thousand people for $40. I could tag 5,000 people and for $70 or $69, I could tag 10,000 of your competitors followers in the comments on that giveaway. And that's just going to really drive awareness and get new people to look at that giveaway. So I'll throw it in the chat right now. So here's the link for that. So yeah, if you are running a giveaway, I would highly recommend that. I see a bunch of questions are popping up in the chat, so I'll get to them in just a second. So yeah, so yeah, I see Andrea. Yeah, don't buy followers. That's not what Google, Instagram likes and everything that I'm doing is organic. So if you're buying followers, you're usually buying fake followers. So I see Andrea was asking about that. So yeah, what I'm doing is just tagging your competitors' followers. I'm not tagging fake people in there or anything like that. I'm just taking your competitors' followers that follow your competitors' accounts because they're more than likely interested in your page. And I'm just going to tag them in that. And that's going to drive that awareness and get them to enter that giveaway because it's a free giveaway. If I just tag them on a normal post, people are going to be like, what are you doing? Don't spam me. But if it's a giveaway and they're following another skateboard company, they probably want some free skateboard products. So they're not going to be mad about that stuff. And I've never really had any issues and it really does work well in terms of driving that awareness and growing that account. I wouldn't really, if you are buying followers, you gotta make sure you buy real followers, not fake ones. Almost everybody is selling fake followers and that does no good for you. You gotta make sure you buy, buy real followers if you are gonna buy followers, but you just gotta be careful if you are going after that route. But, but yeah, let me try to get to some of these questions. So yeah, I see a few questions are coming in. Well, let me just finish one other thing before we jump to the questions is I like to share other people's content. So another way I grow my account is sharing other people's content. So what I do is I built my page up by really just taking other people's content, other skateboarder videos and reposting them because all these big skateboard, there's a lot of big skateboard magazines that promote all the pros. And I was trying to give the up and coming skateboarders a voice and a place for them to get more exposure and visibility. So what I would do is I would take other people's content and repost it on my own page, giving them credit always 100% of the time, give credit to the skateboarder, the filmer, if there's music in the background, always give credit. Because the nice thing about this is they're going to likely reciprocate the favor and they're going to probably give you a shout out saying, hey, check it out. This page gave me a shout out. And I've had pages with over a million followers. Like I've had some of the biggest skateboard brands out there repost my content just because I gave them a shout out without me ever asking them. As long as you give them credit, they're not going to be mad. They're not going to say, take this content down. So I, you, sometimes you might want to ask people, but I've never really had issues. I mean, I, most of the time people are sending me videos because I tell them if you want to be featured, send me some videos. So I get probably 50 messages a day of people just sending me content all day long. So I have an endless supply of user generated content. And then I just give them credit and it works really well. And this is a great way to really build your brand is what I'll do is I'll go look for like the hashtag skateboarding and I'll see what the most trending content is for that hashtag skateboarding. And I'll take that content and repost it on my own page. Give that person credit because if it's trending right now and it's doing really well, it's probably going to do really well on my page or it will do really well on your page as well. So you just have to find that really viral content that's trending and then repost it on your own page and just make sure always give people credit, never take other people's content without giving them credit. That's not the right thing to do. And there's a lot of pages that do that. And that is not how you should behave in business. You're just stealing other people's content. That's not right. So give people credit and you never know who's going to reciprocate the favor. And I've seen some big pages with millions of followers. Give me a shout out just because I did the same for them. So, and you never know who's watching your page or who's looking at your content. So with Instagram, Oh yeah, so that is all I have for Instagram. We'll get to the Q&A in a second. I see a bunch of questions coming in, but if you do like this class and thought it was helpful, I do have a class coming up on September 26th that goes in depth about SEO and social media marketing. So if you're really wanting to learn more about digital marketing, how to get more traffic from Google, free traffic from Google, organic traffic from Google without having to spend money on Google ads, I'll show you how I've ranked my own website, how I've ranked countless other websites and gone them up to the top of Google. I also talk about social media strategies on how to grow your accounts and get more real targeted followers. 
without having to spend money on ad, just like I grow my accounts to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of followers. I could do the same for you. And I show you how exactly step-by-step step how I do that. Also talk about what, and then ultimately talk about how to make sure all this traffic, all these followers convert into leads because we don't want just followers. We don't want just want traffic. We want to make sure this converts into people that are going to call you, email you, become clients. So that's the ultimate goal of all this stuff. Keep these classes to 10 people or less. So it's more one-on-one -on -one, kind of really could help everybody out. It's not a big class like this where it's more generalized. Like Ben, yeah. So if you're looking for more information about that, if you go to seooptimizers.com forward slash learn, that's where you can sign up for that class. I think there might be five seats right now for left, but yeah, if you, so if you're trying to get there, you can go there, but I'll put it in the chat. If you want to check that class out, seooptimizers.com forward slash learn. If you want to learn more about that full day class, it's normally $199, but due to the quarantine and lockdown, can't do them in person. And it cost me a thousand dollars to rent out a room at a hotel and a conference room. So I'm able to pass that savings on to you. I'm not trying to take anyone's money or make extra money off that. So it's $99 now for that class, normally $199, but it's all online. It's all on zoom. Unfortunately can't do them in person right now. Even if I wanted to, there's no, not possible. And so, but so if you want to check that out, that's on September 26th. I do them every month and a half or so. So if you want to check that out, that's a great way to really learn about that stuff in digital marketing. And, and then I do have, again, my main focus is on SEO. So if you want, if you have a website, you want me to check it out from an SEO point of view and let you know what's working, what's not working, you can reach out to me on seooptimizers.com forward slash free. And I'm happy to give you a free analysis on your website from an SEO point of view. So I'll put that in the chat as well is if you want a free website analysis, I'm happy to check that out. If you're thinking about building a website and that stuff, maybe hold off until you get it all launched. And if you do want access to 60 of my favorite SEO and social media free tools that I use on a constant basis, if you want to text the word SEO to the number 313131, I'll send everyone access to that. If you're international, you can let me know. I know there's some people coming in from out of the country. So if you can't dial or text that number, let me know. You can always email me. I'll put my email in the chat as well. So if you want to ask me any questions or have any questions, my email is brandon at seooptimizers.com. So if you have any questions like that. But right now, let me get back to all the questions. I see a bunch came in, coming in and I missed a few. So I'll try to start at the top and let me know if I did miss, miss any questions, but Bridget, what is the best info to put in your bio if it's that important? And the bio, you just need to gotta be creative, copyright, and try to figure out what's gonna, like a value proposition. What are people gonna get from your profile? People don't care about who you are, how long you've been in business. They just wanna know what they're gonna get out of it. So write a value proposition in that bio and let them know what the benefits are that they're gonna get from using your profile, your services, or by following your profile. And Yep. Christine hashtags are a great way to grow your followers organically and get new eyeballs on your content. So I always use hashtags in my posts and I just try to, again, use targeted hashtags. Don't just use generalized ones like SEO or skateboard. Use targeted ones like skateboard videos or skateboarding videos, things like that, where it's more targeted because that's going to get you followers that are actually interested in your service, not just general followers. Rachel, I did my first giveaway, nothing. How can you start a giveaway? So I would look at what I did here. I'll put my, my um, username in the chat. So if you wanna check out my page and then you can look at how I set up my giveaways and you can see what I've done in the past and you could kind of mimic that strategy on, cause it worked or just look at your competitors and see how they run their giveaways. What, what are they asking for? Are they saying tag three friends like this post, share this story in, the, in your giveaway or in your um, stories? There's a lot of different ways to do it. And I see Brad is asking, how do you run the contest to choose a winner? And we'll just choose it at random. We'll just, a great way to go choose your winner is go live on Instagram, going live. And then you have your, uh, your phone there, or you have a screen or you're filming your computer screen. And then you scroll through the comments and randomly pick someone. So people know it's really you. You're not just picking your friend or there's tools like randomizers that randomly pick people. But I like going live because then you go live. It just drives out awareness. People are going to get notified that you're going live. They're going to look at your profile and be like, oh, cool. Brandon's going live. What's he doing? And then they see that you're announcing a winner on a giveaway. 
then you can let them know that there's more giveaways or announce some more notifications in there. And then you get the live audience that is right there, active, interested in what you're offering right now. So yeah, play around with that. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but that's the way I prefer to do it. And so let me see if what other questions I'm going to miss. So how Oh, okay, so this is a good question. How do you know if you're buying real followers? So if you're buying followers and they give you followers within that day, those are fake followers. A lot of people sell followers and they give you what's called ghost accounts where these people will have a million email addresses. They'll use these email addresses to create a million Instagram profiles. So throw pictures on there. They'll have a vid, they'll have profile pictures, they'll have bio descriptions, but they're not really accounts. They're just inactive. They come from other countries and they're not targeted. So you can instantly spot these. It's pretty easy to see these. And Instagram also finds them and deletes them in mass waves. So a lot of people that buy followers or buy fake followers, you'll see that they get deleted after a few days or weeks or months or years whenever Instagram finds them. So yeah, make sure if you are buying followers, there's only like a few companies that really give you real followers. And the way I do it is by being social on social media. So I have a service that I could get you real followers. The only way I do it is by being social on social media. So what I do is, I go in your account and start, you give me a competitor of yours and I'll start following the people that follow your competitors or engaging with them. But other than that, if you're buying followers and they're doing it any other way, it's 99% of the time going to be fake followers. So just be careful with that stuff. Hannah, how do you determine when the best time of day to post is? I would look in your analytics and see when your audience is most receptive because every audience is different. It's not just a one size fits all kind of um, strategy. It's who is your audience? Where are they? What country are they in? What time zone are they in? When are they engaging? Are they watching you before they go to work? Are they going to school? Do they have a family? Are they going to watch you at night before they go to sleep before dinner? It's always different. So you just have to look in the analytics and see when your audience is, is really active and engaging. And Bridget, how many times a day or week do you post on your skateboarding account? Is there a formula? So that's a great question. In the past, I would say post on your profile every single day, but then I realized it's, again, every audience is different. It just depends on who your audience is. My SEO page on Instagram, if I post on there once a day, that's too much. Whereas on my skateboarding page, I could post on there 20 times a day. No one's going to say stop posting skateboarding videos because that's what they want to see. So you just have to know how receptive your audience is. And I would look at your competitors and see how frequently they are posting. That will kind of give you an idea of what you should maybe be posting how frequently, but still test, test, test. You never know what's going to work. Just because it's working for your comp one of your competitors doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Every audience is different. So test, test, and always test. Never stop testing. Testing is never done because you're always going to be evolving and seeing how what's working, what's not working, and being able to create better ideas in terms of getting those strategies. And script school, I was told too many hashtags can be spam. Yep. So yeah. So Dave saying, yeah, too many hashtags. Hashtags used to work really well. Unfortunately, too many people spammed and abused hashtags. So Instagram in the past, you could use as many hashtags as you want. Well, you could use up to 30 before you capped out. Now Instagram says, if you use up to 30 hashtags, that's a little spammy. So what you want to do is, I mean, in the past, I would just have the same 30 hashtags that I post on every post where I have 90 hashtags. I'd have 30 for one post, 30 for another, and 30 for a different one. But Instagram knows if you keep doing that, they're going to shadow ban you where you're not going to be shown for these hashtags anymore. So what I like to do is mix it up and maybe use like just a couple hashtags, like two or three, five hashtags in my posts. Don't use the same hashtags over and over again. That's also going to get you shadow banned. So if I keep using the same one saying like skateboarding, 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 and every single post, they might spam or think I'm spamming them and they'll stop showing me for the, those hashtags. So just mix it up. Don't use the same ones over and over again. You could put the hashtags in your description or you can put it in the comments. That does not matter. People will still find the hashtags. A lot of people put it in the description as a first comment. So it doesn't clutter up their bio or their actual post caption. So it doesn't matter if you do it as a comment or in the descriptions, but just, yeah, don't overdo them. In the past you could, but now don't wanna get hit with any of these penalties. And I heard the algorithm changed recently and I've noticed a dip in engagement. My posts only reached 10 to 20% of my followers. Yep, that's just Instagram messing with engagement. Unfortunately, they're going to keep dropping it and dropping it because they want you to spend money on ads. So I would try, try using like IGTV, Instagram stories, going live, 
using reels and trying to tap into the audience using giveaways using asking questions in your um, posts trying to get more engagement for um people sharing that stuff and i see rob here are some of my best instagram growth strategies be consistent post at least once a day yep definitely be consistent frequency just depends again on your audience and how receptive they are try videos yep try videos live stories yep same thing. Number three, study and use quality hashtags. Yep. Kind of like I said, use hashtags that are targeted. Don't just use general hashtags. That's not going to be good. Four, use user-generated content. That's kind of like I said earlier today. Take other people's content and reuse it because it's going to be the best. And then collaborating with other people because when you take the other content, other people's content, they're going to reach out to you, collaborate with them. And what I do is I find other pages that are similar in audience to me. So I find if I have a page that has 10,000 followers, I'm going to find other pages that are related to my niche that have 10,000 followers and say, I'm going to shout you out on Thursdays and you shout me out on Fridays. And that works really well. And I find other pages that are similar in audience size to my audience and that grows mine really well. Yep. Number nine, host giveaways. Definitely engage with your fans. Yeah. So use your analytics. So yep. Just like Rob saying and those 10 things, it's kind of like what I covered in here. I didn't mention the collaboration, but yeah, that is something I forgot to mention is to collaborate with other people. So yeah, Rob, 100% on point. That's exactly what I would do. And that's what I mentioned in these past slides is do all that stuff and oops, that will get you that traffic. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to close my screen. Sorry about that, but yeah. So if you do all that stuff, that is what Instagram wants nowadays and is gonna make Instagram happy. and. That, and if you make Instagram happy, hopefully they'll show you to more people and increase that reach and increase that um, engagement. But let me see a few more questions that were coming in. How can I trust Instagram that they're really running ads? All we get is a number of views, but who knows if these are real true numbers, Tanya? So yeah, with Tanya, I would use Google Analytics and I have a whole class on analytics and I go over that in that paid class that I'm doing on on September 26th, where I talk about Google Analytics and Google Search Console, because Instagram ads and Facebook ads, they're not gonna tell you the full story of what's working. They're gonna tell you, hey, look, we got you a thousand people that saw your ad and 50 people clicked on it, but what happens after those people left Instagram and clicked on your website? You're not gonna know until you go into Instagram or Google Analytics and look at the bounce rate. I mean, how many people have come to your website left immediately or look at instant Again, Google Analytics is gonna show you all this stuff and it's free. It's gonna show you what pages they came on, what pages they left on, how long they stayed on your website. Facebook is only gonna say, hey, or Instagram is gonna say, hey, we got you 50 people. They're not gonna show you what happens after they get on your website because Instagram knows you don't wanna know that information because it's gonna really, then you're not gonna advertise as much because I look at Instagram ads a lot of time and I'll see that 90% of the people that come from Instagram ads bounce, leave this website immediately you're not gonna know that. And you're just be like, what's going on? What's my audience doing? How are they engaging? Until you look at Google Analytics, that's the only tool I would recommend is Google Analytics is gonna really show you the full story, the full picture of what's going on. Instagram Analytics is not gonna tell you the full story. Shopify Analytics, Squarespace, WordPress Analytics, any of the other tools, they're not gonna, they'll give you a lot of data, but Google Analytics gives you so much information. But I see we've gone over way too much. Sorry, didn't mean to keep everyone around for so long. So I appreciate everyone for coming out. And hopefully this was helpful and that you got some useful information out of it. And I hope everyone stays safe and has a great rest of your week. And I hope to see you next week on a different topic where I think I talk about more SEO strategies next week and how to get free traffic and how the search engines work. But if I didn't get to your questions, if I missed you, you could always email me. Sorry, a lot of questions were coming in. So I... Hope I got to everyone's question. If I didn't get to you, just send me an email and I'm happy to help out. But once again, thanks everyone for coming out. I hope everyone stays safe in these times and hopefully this is beneficial and hopefully this gives you some ideas and gets you think of new ways to market yourself on Instagram and get that engagement back up and get that reach up. And yeah, never buy fake followers. Stick with real organic because fake followers don't do anything. Again, we don't want followers. We want sales. Followers, that's just part of the puzzle. Uh, thanks everyone so much for coming out and have a great rest of your day.